Hey, AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here, looking at example six from our topic 4.4 and predominantly 4.5 related rate section. Wow, that's a mouthful. We're talking about an oil tanker spill problem. It happens, you know, it's 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 unfortunate. We've had some pretty pretty catastrophic oil spills throughout uh, the history of our our shipping and our, and our oil derricks and so forth that are out in certain bodies of water. And so we're going to take a look at exactly what kind of impact this has. What, what kind of oil are we talking about? So oil tanker spill. Problem number six says, and I'll move my camera down here just a little bit. So it says an oil tanker spills oil that spreads in a circular pattern. Well, circular pattern, that's so convenient, isn't it? We can do math when it's a circular pattern. And the radius increases at a rate of 50 feet per minute. How fast are both the circumference and the area of the spill increasing when the radius of that spill is 20 feet? So we kind of see an aerial view. Here's our tanker and this perfect circle. It's hard to believe that this oil was spilled in this perfect circular pattern. So here's what we've got. It says draw a picture. Well, if you want to go ahead and draw the picture, and remember what I'm doing now is using some of the scaffolding techniques that I had already talked about in my previous examples. I think in example uh, three, four, and five, we scaffold the problem with picture and given and find and equation words. And so I highly recommend that you stick with that. You don't have to necessarily write those words. Uh, I'm going to just to kind of give a little bit better detail of what's happening. But it can be really a big game changer by having this information in because sometimes it gives you a way into the problem. So our picture, well, our picture is nothing more than a circle with some radius that's growing outward, right? So I'm going to just put a little positive arrow and say that radius is just getting bigger. That's about it for the picture. So what are we given in this problem? Well, we're always given some kind of a rate. We're always going to be given some a rate or a few rates and we're asked to find a rate. And it says here that the radius is increasing at a rate of 50. So that means our dr dt is going to be equivalent to 50. Okay, well then what are we trying to find? Well, I think there's two things that we're finding. I think we've got a part A and a part C or part B that we can think about here. So in one of the parts, we want to find the rate of change of the circumference, dc dt. And then we also want to find the rate of change of the area, dA dt. And in both cases, we want to do so at the moment that the radius is 20. And then our equations. Well, it turns out there's actually going to be two equations. If you haven't deduce this by now. This is actually a dirty trick. It's like two problems in one, right? So your circumference is 2 pi times r, and your area is going to be pi times r squared. So we're ready to go ahead and start taking our derivatives and figure out what we've got. So I'm going to do the circumference first. So the derivative of circumference with respect to time is dc over dt. And then the derivative of 2 pi r with respect to time is 2 pi. But then you got to tack on your dr dt. And so we're trying to find the rate of change of the circumference. So our dc dt is what we're looking for. And all we need to do is plug in what we know about the dr dt, which is 50, of course. And this will all become 100 times pi. And we would very much like to have a label with that. And if we think about this, well, we've got feet and minutes. Circumference, distance around is still measured in feet. Our time element doesn't change. And boom, there we go. Fifth, 100 pi feet per minute. So about 300 feet all the way around is what our new circumference becomes every single minute, our additional circumference. Now we're going to do the same thing with area. We're going to take the derivative of a equal pi r squared with respect to t. So we get dA dt on the left. 2 pi r to the first times dr dt on the right side. And so we just plug away here. dA dt would be equivalent to 2 times pi. And you're going to notice for the dA dt, 
you actually need to know the radius at that indicated moment. And we will still use our 50 for dr dt. I want to kind of circle back to that. It was interesting circle back. That's not a pun. Circle back to that, our dc dt. Notice that we didn't need a radius there. Radius wasn't part of the problem. In other words, the rate of change of the circumference is completely independent of what the radius size is. But the rate of change of the area does still depend on what the radius happens to be. Now, if we go ahead and do the mathematics here, 20 times 50 is uh, 1,000. And if we multiply by 2 pi, we get 2,000 pi. And that is a positive number, so we know that we're increasing, which makes sense. But the only thing that we need to do is have the right units, and this would be a square feet per minute. Square feet because the top is measured is a is a going to be a measurement of area. There's our oil tanker spill problem using the idea of the circle. It's our first one that used the circle as the main equation. Circles are going to be pretty easy because there's only one variable r in them. Stick around. We've got lots more things coming up with some triangles. We've got uh, 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 some rockets taking off and some further examples. So we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for joining.